My name is Martin Belinsky, and I'm a staff scientist at Fox Chase Cancer Center. Our lab studies GIST, or gastrointestinal stromal tumor, and the focus of my work specifically is on the molecular changes that take place within these tumors. Over this last year, with the generous help of the GIST Cancer Research Fund, we were able to publish a study in BMC Cancer that describes the whole exome sequencing out of unusual GIST. This GIST did not have the changes in genes such as KIT that are found in most GISTs. What we did find was this GIST had defects in a gene known as NF1, which stands for neurofibromin. Now GIST can be found in people with an inherited syndrome that's known as neurofibromatosis, but this was not the case here as this individual did not have the syndrome. This finding was important as NF1 mutations in patients that do not have neurofibromatosis had never been reported in GIST. In those GISTs that are lacking the NF1 protein, we're now trying to understand the other molecular changes that have taken place in those tumors, how those changes affect the tumor cells, and how we can use this information to better treat these patients. I'm Lori Brink. I am an assistant professor in the Molecular Therapeutics Program here at Fox Chase Cancer Center. My lab is focused on studying imatinib resistance in gastrointestinal stromal tumors or GISTs. During the last year, with the gracious support of the GIST Cancer Research Fund, we have been able to publish an exciting report describing preclinical studies in the lab evaluating a matnib in combination with a drug that targets a protein called AKT. AKT has been shown to be an indicator of a matnib resistance in GIST, and when AKT is turned on, it leads to increased cell growth. We found two proteins that are involved in the cell death pathway that are turned on by this combination, and as a result, can make treatment more effective. In the year ahead, with the continued support of the GIST Cancer Research Fund, we will be testing this combination in additional GIST models to determine which populations of GISTs this can be successful in. We are trying to understand how the cell death pathway is leading to increased efficacy in our studies, with the hope that this work will translate into the patient setting in clinical trials. Dr. Margaret von Maren. I am a professor in the Department of Hematology and Oncology at Fox Chase Cancer Center. I also direct the sarcoma service line here, which means that I uh, run the clinical services um, and am in charge of uh, the clinical trials that we do for our sarcoma patients. And a large number of our sarcoma patients are GIST patients. I see many patients with GIST at Fox Chase in my clinic. Many of them have received standard treatments and need new options because their disease is still growing and they're still feeling well and want treatment. I spend a lot of time doing clinical research and testing new agents for GIST patients. One of the most rewarding has been a study that looked at a drug called lincitinib in a group of patients who don't respond to typical treatments. And this work was very rewarding because it came from preclinical studies done by Dr. Rink here at Fox Chase. In the next year, I'm very hopeful that we'll be able to write and start a study combining an AKT inhibitor with Gleevec for patients who have advanced disease. For me, this is the most rewarding part of my job where the laboratory studies that I've seen develop over the years now can come into the clinic and see if they can benefit patients as well. It's been my honor and privilege to work with Tanya and Robert and the GIST Cancer Research Fund for over a decade. Their support of over a million dollars to our laboratory efforts has been invaluable. It's really led us to be able to do things we wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. Thank you so much for your efforts. <music>